gentlemen, welcome to the Political Vigilante Live at the Dojo of Comedy at the Sycamore Tavern in beautiful Hollywood, California. Here's your host, Graham Elwood. Yay! That's how us YouTubers do it, guys. We gotta get shit done ourselves. That's how we do it. I record in my apartment, so you better believe I'm gonna do my own intro. What's up? How's everybody doing tonight? Yay! Yeah, Yellow Vest is here. Yay! Saw somebody with a green party sticker in the in the parking lot on their car. I was like, all right, we're at the right place. Let's do it. <laughs> Progressives are here. We're we're in massive numbers. I'm recording this, so anybody listening at home, there's probably ten thousand people here tonight. <laughs> it is pretty fantastic. That's how many progressives oh. are here. Mostly violent burn bros, I will tell you that. Violent, sexist burn bros, throwing chairs, and sisters. <laughs> no, I thought only guys like burning. Um, so this is a, I'm so, I'm so glad to do it. But this is only like the second or third political vigilante live that I've ever recorded. Woo! I'm excited, yes, it's fantastic. You're gonna see a little later on, Mr. Jimmy Dore is here. Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. He's in the back. Uh, he just got back from a Nancy Pelosi fundraiser, so he's very excited. He's so great. She's battle-tested. He's excited. Uh, he is still with her. Uh, <laughs> I posted a photo from Jimmy's. How many people How many people were at the Jimmy Dore and Friends comedy show last Thursday? Couple of you, yeah. okay, by applause, you raise your hands. Thank you so much, progressives. You're so, like, polite. You're so polite, progressives are so polite. Um, and I posted a photo of Jimmy on stage, and I said, here's Jimmy Dore at a Hillary Clinton fundraiser, and I put that on my Twitter feed. A bunch of people got the joke, and a bunch of people were like, what the fuck is Jimmy doing at a Hillary Clinton fundraiser? What is going on? Jesus Christ, he'll just take a dollar from anybody. What a, I knew these, you know, progressives always flip the fuck out. You know, I knew Jimmy would sell out. God damn it, God damn it, God damn it, God damn it, God damn it. And someone tried to, what's selling out? She was, you know, one of, she's one of our heroes. She's a feminist guy. And I love all oh, Twitter fights. Fucking fantastic. Fantastic. I just tweeted. Kamala Harris put out that tweet a couple days ago, like, we, I helped fight to get homeowners $20 billion. And I was like, I wrote in all caps, bullshit. You were paid by Steve Mnuchin and you fucking let those assholes steal my house. Um, it's gotten over 2,000 likes and close to 1,000 retweets, which has been fantastic. But it wouldn't be a Twitter thing without some wing bird emailing me directly, you white racist, you hate Kamala, because she's... Right, okay, that's what it is. That's why I did it. Not because she's a corporate Democrat, but because I'm, I don't know, part of some Tiki Torch fucking group or whatever that's just out there. Fantastic. Thank you, Twitter, for going. There's always got to be one, one freak. And I'm sitting there going, God, you know, doing all this indie politics stuff, you know, I always have somebody freak out, but then I went, you know what? Even before I started doing political vigilante, it's just the internet. It's just the internet. I've been on, like, Doug Benson's Doug Loves Movies podcast, his movie podcast. It's a jokey thing, we do movie trivia, and someone would be like, you fucking cheated at the movie trivia game, Graham, you son of a bitch, Godfather 3's not that bad. Like, oh, fucking leave me alone, it's horrible. Godfather 3 is a fucking train wreck. It's a fucking disaster. It's like, I don't know, Broward County's elections. It's just fucking unbelievable. I can only do that joke here tonight. The joke is only for you folks, progressives. Which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, the less than that we're getting, since it's, everyone's like, we got Kamala, we got a the lesser of two heroes, we got a Trump, we Trump. It's like, yes, you're right. Racism started January of 2017 in America. That's when it started. Everything was great before that, the lesser of two evils. America's the only country where we would do that, where we accept lesser of two evils as like, 
for our politics. Nowhere else in American culture would we accept that, right? America's about, we want, we want the best. I want to get the best job, the best car. I want my kids to go to the best school. We want the Olympic teams to win all the gold medals. We want everything in America. It's got to be the best. But politics, the thing that affects all of our lives more uh -huh. than anything else, lesser of two evils. Is there anywhere else would you hang? Like, honey, it's date night. We need to get a sitter for the kids. There's only two babysitters to choose from. A warmonger and a pussy grabber. Which one do you want to have babysit our children? Well, I guess the pussy grabber because he won't blow up our home. I don't know. The all new Chevy Malibu. Just not <laughs> as shitty as a Ford Taurus. After the 2016 election, everybody was like, "You got your system is broken. You gotta fix it, man." And the Demo like, and they were like, "The super delegates, it's bullshit." And then they just said, "We're gonna limit them a little, and not, but not all." But they sound like a, an alcoholic that you have an intervention for. You know, you sit the alcoholic down and go, "Hey, you know, we." Your alcoholism, it's ruining your life. Your job is falling apart. Your kids don't want to talk to you. Your relationships, we love, I can't be around you anymore. I want you to do better. And then, and then they go, you're right, I'm sorry. My alcoholism, it's, I've got to end it. I'm done, no more drinking. I'm done drinking, that's it. Except the weekends. On the weekends, a couple of drinks on the weekends, but never, never during the week. I mean, a glass of wine with dinner after a long work day, but that's it. Never during, never during a work day. Never during a, a night, work day. Ne I mean, if it's a business lunch and it's a client, I gotta close the contract and he's ordering cocktails. I gotta close the fucking sale. I'm not an asshole, but never, never in the morning. I mean, a little something in my coffee just to get the fucking day going, but never, that's it. I'm done drinking. Thank you. Yeah, all right. I'll take an applause break for 10,000 people. <laughs> all right, that guy let the dogs out. Come on now. It's 2002, everybody. Where the was up, guys? Um, so, and then as funny as progressive, I don't know if this has happened. Like, when you start really paying attention to shit and you see how broken the system is, you know, you get out of the identity politics. I don't know about you, but I, I'm looking at everything differently now and it's changing. Like, I used to be a big uh, NFL fan. I grew up, I played high school football, you know, I grew up in Chicago watching the Bears. I'm a big, I love the football. Yeah, I can't, I can't watch the NFL, you know, because it's like, it's this big corporate machine that you watch. It's like all these ads for war, and they're just like recruiting teenage boys and girls to join the war machine. They covered up the CTE. They didn't give a shit about domestic violence until it's on camera. Oh, then now we're gonna do something about it. They let. They didn't stand uh, behind Kaepernick. He took a knee. They should have gotten behind him. The, the NFL, absolutely right. The NFL should have gone. We're America's game. This is a con he has a constitutional right to do this. This is her his First Amendment right to take a knee. People in the audience, their First Amendment right, they can boo him, they can applaud him, they can stand, and that's that's America. Yeah, football, America's game. That's what they should have done. It's that they didn't. It's unreal. And and they have a racist mascot, the Washington Redskins, that they still allow in the league. The owner of the Redskins is like, well, it's a part of our history. I mean, slavery and genocide is a part of America's history, but I don't know that we need to celebrate it in a logo that we put on merchandise, you know? What's the NFL going to do next? Just the all-new NFL Trail of Tears beer koozie. It's all right to laugh at that, folks. You're not bad. You, you're laughing as you get the joke. You're not celebrating what I said. You get it. Um... All the, none, of the, none of the ads are for me either. All the NFL ads, whenever you watch a game, every ad, there's no just like, oh, here's, a, here's an advertisement. All the ads are just like, yeah, beer and trucks and guns and fucking steak and titties, yeah, NFL, gun, beer, temp, truck, steak, titty. Just fucking, and they're like, I mean, I like boobs, but not like, yeah, boobs. Like, oh, settle down, you know. The NFL gun, boob, tit, drug, cup. I'm just making up words at this point. <laughs> and I'm just watching this going, especially my life has you know, changed over the last 10 years. I'm a vegetarian, right? I don't drink. 
uh, I drive an electric car. None of these ads are for me. None of them are for me. None of them. And I was like, I wish they would make ads for hippies like me, but like NFL style. You know? Hi, I'm Pittsburgh Steeler head coach Mike Talman. And when I'm making vegan smoothies for my teammates, I use Blue Diamond Almond Milk, the official organic almond milk of the National Football League. <laughs> NFL plant-based life. <laughs> The 2018 Nissan Leaf, the official zero emission vehicle of the National Football League. <laughs> Plug it in, charge it up, and hit the open road up to 93 miles and charge it for another three or four hours, then hit the open road again. <laughs> Great for tailgating, reiki healing, yellow vest, extinction rebellion events, or progressive comedy shows, the Nissan Leaf. I'm Chicago Bears former head coach Mike Ditka, and I need you to meditate. <laughs> An official message from the National Football League. Meditate for 20 minutes a day. Ladies and gentlemen, to do the coin toss at Super Bowl 53, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. I will now lead the stadium in guided meditation. Yeah, lava, lava, USA! I don't know. That's, I figured something would blow the fuck up, wouldn't it? <laughs> Since there's two uh, angry Irish Chicago guys on the show tonight, I'll do this joke. I haven't done this in a while, but um, uh, this is what Jimmy knows this because he's related to Chicago cops. Uh, Chicago Cops are very unique. I don't know if you, I, I used to watch the show Cops. I, I know it's still on in syndication. I used to love watching it because living in Chicago is always these cops from all these other cities, Phoenix and Denver and all these like clean cut cops that were always just like, excuse me, sir, I'm gonna need you out of the vehicle. I'm gonna need you, sir, I'm gonna need you to exit the vehicle. Chicago Cops was just some big burly dude with like a mustache, like it looks like Dennis Franz and a big cigar, like, get the fuck out of the car! <laughs> I forgot the rest of this joke. I haven't done it in so long. I was like, I fucking forgot the rest of the joke. I know there's I just forgot the rest of the joke. I just blanked out on that. I was like, I forgot that joke. Fuck, I used to, that used to be my closer back in the 90s. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I used to drink more. Um, yeah, fuck, I forgot that joke. God damn it. Well, we'll start the show over again. Hey, everybody, what's going on? How you? No, I love these progressive shows. I love these progressive shows because, like, when Ron and I do the progressive comedy tour shows, they're so fantastic, and I love being progressive about because there's never, all these years, and Jimmy will attest to this too. When we started, as co we're usually so many of uh, much of our career was just battling with audiences. You get in some bar and you fight with everybody, and, uh, and you guys are just so loving and supportive. You don't heckle. If you yell something out, it's like either super supportive or just like a political clarification. Like, Actually, Graham, that ballot measure passed with two thirds vote. Like, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. 